Boom. Welcome to another episode of the Boom Breakdown. We got the fights tomorrow night in Atlantic City. Really good card coming up. Uh, a lot of guys on here that I know, local guys, so uh, I'm excited to watch this card and see how everything unfolds. Uh, with the main card, I'm just going to do the main card here. There's six fights on the main card, starting with Jim Miller and Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker is a young uprising guy. He's uh, really flashy on the feet, throws some good knees, some good Muay Thai, and uh, he's really fast also for the weight class. He's a big 155er too. Uh, but, uh, you know, Jim Miller is obviously that savage veteran that just never goes away. And he still has it. I mean, he has a lot of fights in the UFC. And he's taken some losses, but he always usually bounces back in the end. And uh, it's a tough fight to call because with Jim Miller, you just never know which one's going to show up. You know, sometimes he's just a nonstop demon that just keeps coming forward in your face. Throwing nasty elbows, nasty punches. And, of course, he's solid on the ground as well. Black belt on the ground. Both of these guys are pretty good on the ground. Uh, I would say Miller might have the edge on the ground. But maybe Hooker has the edge on the feet as far as uh, as far as far finishing the fight goes. You know, in this fight, I think I'm going to have to just go with the younger guy that looks sharp lately. And that's Dan Hooker. And I think uh, he'll get the job done by a, maybe a late TKO. I could see him catching Miller with a with a solid knee or something like that, maybe a head kick. But uh, yeah, we'll go with uh, Dan Hooker by TKO. Next up, we got Sterling versus Johns. Obviously, I know Aljamain Sterling. I've trained with him. Uh, he's really well-rounded guy. He's really unpredictable on the feet, flashy, got a lot of movement going. You know, uh, kind of you know has has a lot of dexterity in his legs. Really good uh, head kicks. Stuff like that. And uh, Brett Johns is, is just a well-rounded, solid guy as well. Uh, not as flashy, not as unpredictable, but he's he's good everywhere. So, uh, you know, he's got good boxing fundamentals. He's got good takedowns and, and, and control on the ground. He likes to stay on top and rain down a little bit of ground and pound on you. And uh, just keep you in position against the cage. And obviously we saw in his last fight with the calf slicer, he has some slick submissions as well to catch Joe Soto's, you know, he's no slouch on the ground. So a leg lock specialist himself, I hear. And uh, Johns was able to catch him in that crazy submission with the, the calf slicer, which was really impressive. That was cool to see. Um, this fight's hard to pick as well because you just never know where this fight's going to go. Uh, I think it'll be all over. I think it'll be on the feet, on the ground. Uh, Aljamain's a really, really hard guy to deal with on the ground. He has really high-level grappling as well as wrestling, and uh, his control is good. If he's on top, it's re it's really hard to get up. Um, you know, he he's really good at taking the back and getting your neck, so you got to watch out for that with Aljo. Uh, with Johns, you know, if he gets the fight to the ground, I feel like Aljo will be able to scramble up. You know, he's he's got that good defensive wrestling where he keeps it moving. You know, he can get up if you get him down. So I don't see Johns being able to control Aljo if he does get him down. And I feel like this fight's very close, though, as far as skill sets go. And I feel like it would probably go to the judges. And I think Aljo might be able to edge him out with a little bit more flashiness, a little bit more touching him on the feet. And uh, maybe the, the wrestling gets negated and, and we don't see it go to the ground. But both of them have good abilities to take it down. So... You never know what the game plan is. Maybe one of them wants to go to the ground, one of them doesn't. Maybe they both don't. Maybe it's just going to be a striking battle. Uh, I think Aljo's got a little bit of reach on him. He's going to be able to keep him at bay with the kicks if he wants to. And uh, But, you know, obviously coming off that devastating KO loss, we'll have to see where his head, at, head is at. Uh, he seems to be in really good spirits. Seems to be learning from it. You know, I think, like he said, probably just got impatient, rushed into a takedown from the outside. And, you know, if you learn from your mistakes, uh, it's a different story. But always hard to bounce back from a KO, and it's always interesting to see how a guy does it. So I got my eyes on that one. Obviously, Bantamweight division, exciting division. Uh, a lot of good fighters coming up now, and uh, I think everything's getting a little bit more in place up at the top. So uh, big things happening there. Uh, I got to go with my man Aljo by decision in this fight. Uh, next up, we got David Branch and Santos. Two big boys right here throwing heavy leather. 
Yeah, I would say David Branch is uh, probably the smarter fighter as far as trying to avoid damage and, and take the fight where he needs to take it. Um, he's solid everywhere. He's got good fundamental boxing, good stand-up. Both of these guys are pretty tall, pretty big for the weight class. And uh, Santos just comes and throws some heavy bombs in there. So you got to watch out for that guy's power. Uh, I would give the power edge to Santos if it's going to end by a one punch. Branch, I would say, is a little bit more sharp, a little crisper with his striking. And um, really tough to see if this fight would go to the ground. I don't see that happening. But if it did, I would say Branch would be the one to engage in that to try to, you know, maybe maybe slow up Santos on the striking side and, and take it down and just kind of stall there and, and, and work on the ground. I got my morning coffee. What would I do without it? Boom. Yeah, so with that fight, I'll probably have to go with Branch. I think he's going to rebound from his latest loss uh, with, with um, Luke Rockhold and get back in the win column here, but I would take it by decision. I think he'll just be able to be smart enough to avoid that big shot and out point Santos. Maybe get takedowns, maybe get side control and uh, and uh, win by points that way as well. So we'll go with Branch by decision. And we got Willis versus Sherman, two heavyweights. I was just watching an interview with Willis, and man, that guy's got a good uh, attitude. He's got good mentality. Seems to be a killer, man. Uh, I've seen he've seen his power. He's short and stocky for the weight class, but he's not a slow guy. You know, he's got some fast hands. Uh, Sherman's also really well-rounded. He's got some good striking, and uh, I think he's coming off a loss. I'm not too sure about his last fight, who he fought last, but Sherman's obviously got the, the reach advantage here. He's three inches taller. So maybe he's going to want to use his kicks to keep this guy away a little bit. This guy's got a bomb left hand in Justin Willis. Uh, who did Chase Sherman fight in his last fight? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. He lost to Shamil Abdurakimov by a KO. So it's another um, situation where you're wondering how a guy's going to rebound to a KO loss. And, of course, fighting another guy with that KO power, that's, that's uh, always a scary thing. He's going to have to try to avoid that, try to stay on the outside, touch him with the jab, land some good leg kicks, keep him at bay, and try to win by points like that. I don't, I don't see Sherman getting the KO here. I think this guy, Justin Willis, has a good chin. He's also shorter, stockier. It's going to be harder to, to catch him that way, I feel. Uh, he's going to be wanting to get on the inside and make that range closer and, and be able to land that short power shot and be in a spot where Chase Sherman can't really land much with the reach advantage. Probably wanted to keep him outside. So uh, I could see Justin Willis coming in and catching him again with that left hand. Uh, I'm going to go with Justin Willis by KO either first or second round. All right, now we talking. Now we talking. We got Frankie Edgar. Cub Swanson, this is a rematch fight. Kind of an interesting situation because Edgar had fought Swanson and it pretty much dominated him in the past. And it's probably a weird situation to have to come in and fight someone who you already had a really great performance against and try to either match that performance or beat that performance. Not going to be easy. If anything, Swanson has the advantage here as far as you know trying to get back and get the win back. I mean, everyone wants to avenge a loss when they lose. So for Swanson, he's in a bit of a funnier position, you know, trying to get back on the win column as well. Both of these guys coming off of losses to Ortega. So that's interesting to see who's going to rebound from that. I would say Swanson looked... He looked better against Ortega in the, in the fight. I think he was winning more so than Edgar was. They both were kind of getting off on the feet, but Swanson looked like he was having a pretty smooth performance against Ortega before he got caught in the submission so you know I don't know if that says much I mean obviously when you're facing a guy that dominated you that's something that is tough to deal with you got to go in there with a the mentality like just wipe it away and forget about it because start from scratch you know and just see what you could do in there now uh Edgar's fighting back at home in New Jersey I, I don't know if this is his first time back there 
fighting in front of his home crowd, which is exciting. Excuse me. Um, that's pretty cool, you know. But it's a quick rebound off of a knockout. I know Edgar says he feels all right after the fight. You know, no concussion. But who really knows what kind of brain trauma is taken when you get KO'd like that. I mean, it wasn't the worst of KOs. But still, there's something happening there. So, you know, hopefully Edgar can avoid that. You know, Swanton's not really known for, for a lot of knockouts. But he does have power in his hands. And, he, and he's a really, really unpredictable, flashy guy that throws... Cool things in the clinch and trips and elbows and spinning techniques. And Edgar's just got that forward boxing pressure in and out. He's really durable. High energy, high pace. I mean, this is a really exciting fight. If it goes a little bit differently, we could see some some different things from Swanson. Uh, obviously, he's going to have to look out for the wrestling. Last time Edgar took him down pretty much at will and dominated him on the ground, passed guard and just stayed on top and, and rained down some ground and pound and kept passing guard and over and over so we'll hopefully see some improvements in Swanson on the ground and with the wrestling defense and we'll see where that goes but I think ultimately Edgar is going to be able to bounce back off that win and he's going to thrive off of the energy of the crowd and I feel like he's going to get the job done pretty similar to the last time it's not that much time has passed not not much time to improve for Swanson I think it'll be a little bit of a more competitive fight but I think in the end Edgar is going to get it done by decision. Main event, we got Edson Barboza, Kevin Lee, both coming off losses. Barboza lost to Khabib, but I would go ahead and say nobody is like Khabib, so you don't got to really worry about that. But Kevin Lee does have really good wrestling, so you know he was able to take Tony Ferguson down, and that's not an easy task. So I imagine he'll be able to take Barboza down, but Barboza is really good at getting up. You know, against Khabib, not many guys can get up. So that's that's a whole other story. But Barboza, obviously, savage leg kicks, savage body kicks, savage everything kicks. The guy kicks so hard, so fast. So you got to watch out for that. Kevin Lee's a little bit vulnerable on the feet. I think he, he lets loose. He throws, you know, wild shots, and, and that opens you up to, to get caught. You got to be a little bit smart against Barboza. You got to be defensively sharp and come in and put the pressure on him and close the distance quick because he's going to want to keep you at bay and throw those leg kicks, throw those body kicks, and, and throw those spinning wheel kicks. So you got to watch out for those with Barboza, obviously. And I would imagine Kevin Lee is going to throw some heavy strikes, but look to put the pressure and kind of look at Khabib's performance and say, hey, he, he set the blueprint. Nobody else made Barboza look like that, really. I know Ferguson fought Barboza and submitted him with that, but Ferguson's another animal, slick with submissions, caught him in the transitions, and he does some funky stuff, and uh, Kevin Lee's not that guy. He's more of a straightforward, throws heavy bombs, and tries to use his wrestling to get you down and stay on top and do, use some ground and pound. He likes to take the back. Obviously, he submitted uh, Kiesa. That's not easy either. Kiesa's a, a really good grappler. And so if Kevin Lee can get Barboza down and, and break him down a little bit, get him tired, he could potentially take his back and submit him. But I see a fight where Edson Barboza is going to be able to use his athleticism to move, stick, move, use a lot of kicks, and maybe even hurt Kevin Lee. But I think maybe Kevin Lee is going to want to take it down and Barboza is going to be able to get up. I don't think he's going to be able to take him down and smash him like Khabib. So I think he'll get up more and be able to move and and, and not get as tired and, and land those strikes still. But uh, in the end, I feel like Kevin Lee is going to have to show what difference he is from that last fight against Ferguson because he came in, obviously he had the staph infection, but we saw Kevin Lee that got tired, that made mistakes. And that got caught in a triangle and tapped pretty quick, you know. So Edson Barboza different. He's not the same guy off his back with submissions, but he's very good at scrambling and getting up to his feet. So it's going to be a high pace fight, and it's going to be a lot of uh, heart and will, and we're going to see who wants him more. Uh, this is a big fight in the lightweight division to see uh, what's going on with the title because obviously we got Khabib now as the champion. We don't know how long Connor's going to be out. You got Eddie Alvarez up there. Ferguson just had surgery. There's a lot of stuff going on at the top of the division, so we really don't know who's next. And it could be one great per performance away from getting that next shot. So either one of these guys, if they can get a finish, they're pretty much next in line, I would think. So 
We'll see what happens there, but I really think Edson Barboza's got clean enough and fast enough striking to, to catch Kevin Lee, and I'm going to have to go with Barboza by uh, TKO. That's it for today for the Boom Breakdown. Uh, covered the main event. That's usually what I'll do unless there's some really exciting prelims. Obviously, my boy Ryan LaFlair's on there. He's going to get the job done. The guy's a savage. He's a mentor up at the gym at Long Island MMA. Got a lot of knowledge, and uh, hopefully we see him come back in the win column. I'm sure he'll get it done. And, uh, yeah, so stay tuned for more of these in the future. We're going to have more stuff coming out on my YouTube channel, so check it out. Follow me on social media at BrianBoom135. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Boom. Cheers.